Good morning. It is Monday morning, April 6th, and uh, today should be a really short update, but, um, you know, we've got some positive news, comparatively positive news to share, and so I thought it'd be a good idea to do that. Uh, First, we're going to start with the whole United States, and you'll see that our curve isn't smooth anymore. Uh, you can see it's got peaks and valleys here, uh, here specifically on the projection line. But here at the top, we've got some peaks and valleys in terms of our shading. A little smoother on the bottom, which makes sense because we're never going to turn back. Um, but there, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. What's most important here about this thing is two things. Number one, our highest deaths per day has actually increased. And you can see that we've had another, we talked about this last week when we had this jump from 520 to 870. And we were like, that's a huge big jump. Uh, and then we had some smaller rate of increases. And then we've had a big, big jump here from April 3rd to 4th, which, uh, which pushes up our total number. Our total numbers that we were projecting three or four days ago were at 2,600. Now we're projecting 3,000. But if you look at total deaths, our total death number has actually gone down. Uh, and why is that? Well, from comparing this graph to the ones we saw before, two things have happened. Number one, our, this is higher. Let me, you know what, let me draw again, just because everybody seems to enjoy that. Do, 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 do. Let me draw again. So this curve that we had projected before from here-ish, looked a little more like so and it came down but actually lasted a lot longer we expected this to go down in june and so again kind of inversely to what we had reported earlier this guy's been pushed up in total number of deaths and i think that's just adjustment right so this is higher but if you can go back and compare this peak, we expected the peak to occur about 14 or 15, and now this peak has kind of flattened out across the top. Yes, the numbers are a little higher here, but this flattening is occurring, so the stuff that we're doing, the social distancing, it's definitely having an effect in terms of the model, and it's pushing everything out to the right, which is great. It's also great because we seem, because the sooner we get into this curve, the sooner we get out of it. And so you, you heard me say stuff about, you know, May 1st and the kids not going back to school because what's the point at that point? But the last time we saw this, we also had the shaded uh, curves going into June. And so we were watching all of this be shaded over here. Uh, and so the total numbers going into June were going to be higher. Uh, and that's problematic. So what to take away from this curve in terms of our discussions? Number one, it is higher, right? So more people are going to die at the peak. Um, this is less steep, and that's because we're getting a little closer, but this falls down faster, right? There's, you can see that calculus work curve we were talking about, it comes down faster, and then it levels off. And so that is comparatively, uh, good news and um, and it's weird and so we can talk about the math a little bit why is this so staccato and choppy well without getting into the weeds the curve that we're actually predicting when we talk about this equation here is not the per day deaths the curves that we're actually predicting is the total deaths you can see this one's a little smoother but there is some chop in here because of lack of smoothness or whatever and so we are taking the derivative of this one, my calculus people, and using that to construct this, right? So again, we're not talking about a normal curve per se, but we are using a model of the normal curve in order to predict that. How do we do total daily deaths? That's, that's how we do it. And so there's some choppiness here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about this choppiness. Just pretend that it is a big top smooth curve. Um, if you're looking at total number of deaths per day as your as your uh, thermos or your litmus test, then we're at 1755 as of yesterday or the day before yesterday. You should expect something in you know in a very similar number under 1800, but that's quickly going to jump from 2,000 deaths per day up to 3,000 deaths per day. And so when we get to 
2,800, 3,000. Um, and again, this thing shifts on a day-to-day -day basis depending on what yesterday's numbers looked like. You have to assume that that big number jump occurred here. Hopefully we're wrong and that number gets smaller. Um, but it doesn't appear to be, it appears to be getting a little bigger every day. Uh, what is really great news is our total projections went from 95,000 down to 81,000. Uh, I doubt the official federal numbers are going to shift because, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to give, you may not want to give good news if it's going to bite you in the butt um, later. But, you know, this is fantastic. And if we jump to Texas, because that's where our attention is. You know, people people love to see this. So let me see this shift over here. Da, 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 da. Texas, 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 Texas. We still have a right-hand shift, not as much as we did before. And that's probably because we finally are digging into our increase. But again, this is there's a flattening here. And by the time we get to June, we are back to normal. The birthday party is going to be scheduled. We'll talk to Jessica about that today. But this looks much, much better than it did three days ago, even though the higher numbers of total deaths are higher at the peak. And so I, I, I really think that we're going to get back to normal here soon. Another great, uh, another great discussion to have is in terms of our capacity. I don't know how many, how many ventilators do we have in the state of Texas. I don't know what the official ventilator count is in the state of Texas, and I'm sure the state does, and so I'll try to find that number today. But we need 605, make it 1,000 ventilators. If we need 1,000 ventilators and we've got 2,200 ICU beds, I think what this really means to us is that in Texas, the flattening of the curve is doing its job. Um, I was listening to a state senator uh, email this morning that talked about our total capacity and numbers in terms of ICU beds and how hospitals are at 40 percent. Um, and so I think that's true. I think hospitals are making space just in case. And I think we're going to be just fine, uh, which is not to say that just fine means people aren't going to die, right? There are people are going to die. And so the only other thing I wanted to address today was the comparative statistics when it comes to these deaths and other deaths. And so we've had, uh, we've had some folks on social media uh, make comments about why we aren't, you know, why we care about this more than we care about other things. And as a comparison, uh, if you're not familiar with the Texas streak, Texas Highway, the streak, it's a campaign in Texas that means that for 19 straight years, at least one person has died every single day in the state of Texas. And so this is something that's been weighing on me the last couple of years, because you see the signs when you're on the highway. The total number of traffic fatalities in 2018 in the state of Texas were 3639, which is higher number than we're predicting in terms of total numbers per day. That is terrible. We can't do that. No, it's not in terms of total numbers in the state, right? We are predicting a total of 2,025 muscle menos people are going to die in the state of Texas according to this, which is not to say that there are secondary medical issues. Um, and the total highway deaths are 3,639. And so the argument says, and so the argument says, if we are willing to shut down the national economy for 2,000 uh, deaths in the state of Texas, but we're not willing to shut down the national economy for 3,800 days instead of Texas. Then why are we treating uh, why are we treating the COVID-19 issue as such a calamity when there are other activities that we are doing as a society that are creating more deaths? And we talk about this in stats uh, right at the beginning of the semester because it's critically important. And those are identifying biases in logic. Uh, this bias in, in particular is called an anchoring bias. Uh, it means that once you uh, have a number or an opinion that you, uh, that you are aware of, that ev you use everything else to compare it back to this anchor. And so we have this anchor particular to the state of Texas, but in every other state where we are willing to or have accepted the fact that 3,800 people, 3,500 people are going to die on the highway. 
And so we are, you know, me texting while I'm driving or me drinking and driving or, or any other individual speeding, right? If you speed on the highway, you're contributing to that 3800 number uh, as opposed to, you know, potentially continue to, as opposed to staying at home with the COVID number or whatever. But that anchor has been established. And so that's an, that's an acceptable norm. Um, whether, and it's a difficult thing to say that you, we are all willing to accept that 3,800 people are going to die on the highway in the state of Texas. Clearly, this year will be smaller uh, for all the obvious reasons. Um, but, we, but, you're, but, you, but you still answer a text while you're driving. You still pick up the phone while you're driving. You're still speeding on the highway while you're driving. Matter of fact, you know, we make fun of other people who are not speeding on the highway while we're driving because that, that number is an anchor point on which we rest our opinion. For COVID-19, we have no anchor. We have no idea what that number is going to be. So when you hear the government say up to 250,000 deaths, you know, we, we have no idea to tell the government that they're right or that they're wrong. You know, if you look at the, 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 if you look at the curve that we're throwing up here, we don't know if this is right or wrong, right? We don't know that this is an appropriate model. We think it's about as good a model as we can get. And, you know, we've been a little, you know, our projections have been a little low, um, we've been a little lower than the actual numbers, but we're not that far off. And so we just don't know what that number is. Um, and until we have an appropriate, comparable, emotional, psychological acceptance of whatever the effect of COVID-19 is, then we can move forward. And so there is some fear here. Uh, the response may not, may be a little bit over the top in terms of the national economy and and, uh, you know, we're real lucky. We're going to get a check. I work for the university. It's a, basically a state job. Uh, so we're going to be fine. Uh, my other business bills quarterly. We're going to be fine. But other people aren't. And so there's a folks that are going to go back to work next week, you know, whether or not they're going to be in violation of the state guidelines. And, you know, we've got to be real careful with each other not to judge each other because we don't have a true anchoring point, And that's creating a lot of uncertainty. And we need to use this as an exercise to get a little bit more comfortable with uncertainty because we have nothing to compare it to. And so your friend on Facebook who's saying, and I'm thinking about one in particular, who's saying, hey, we're not, you know, this is not appropriate. How come all the other lives are worth less than COVID-19? And they're not, they're all worth the same. We just don't have this emotional, psychological anchoring point to say, this is an acceptable normal and that one is not. And that's, and that pushes us to do all of these other um, measures such as social distancing, which if you look at the flatness of the curve appears to be working, uh, appears to be working. And so if you compare this number, this 82,000 number that we're predicting as of today to the 94,000 number that we looked at three or four days ago, I mean, why is it, is it worth, is it worth staying home or, you know, not in the state of Texas across the, this is nationwide. So, you know, we're comparing this 82,000 number as opposed to the 94,000 number from last, from three days ago. Is it worth staying home an extra month to save 10,000 lives? Meh, sure. Does it mean that I'm not, you know, going to wear a mask or not? Well, that's, that's up to you. I mean, I don't want to get into that discussion. But I, th I do think that we're going to get back to normal sooner than we think we are. Uh, I think that that getting back to normal is going to coincide here with the end of much of the school year. And... There's no, there's no sense that the independent school districts uh, are going to go back to school because what's the point at that point, right? Let's, let's kill the semester, have an easy summer, and get back to normal in September. I, th I think this, this, this is looking better. I think that the social distancing stuff is working. Um, and the sooner we do this, the sooner we get back to normal. And it looks like that's going to happen. Hopefully, we'll have just as good news on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But we'll get there when we get there.